Absence of your jurisdiction. I don't accept your offer. You can shove it up your asphalt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need the contract. You don't need a driver's license. You can't be forced to contract. New song, everybody. We're going to put the song online at the end of the video. All you got to do is listen to it. It says everything you need to have said. We're going to go ahead and thank you. Application is an offer to contract. Ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, I got to hit this screen because my screen was getting ready to time out. Now, I want to show you all something. This is the Eon channel. Do you see right here? Five million views. But if you look at this stuff, it only says like 800 and 1,000. Don't believe that, people. Do not go off of what you're seeing underneath the videos. I ain't made a dime off of this. Oh, uh, su subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Oh, please subscribe to my channel and hit like. It will really help the algorithm. You don't hear me doing none of that bull crap. You don't hear me. Eventually, I, I told one of the staff members that I will let them go ahead and monetize the website. You know, they've been asking, why don't I do it? And I told them, all right, fine. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you see on any of my videos any commercials, that's Google making money off of that. That's not me. I have not made a dime off of YouTube. Now, look, wait, hold on. This is just one channel. We're not even going to talk about the channel that had 10 million views. Okay, that they took down, or the other channels that they took down. Please understand, I'm not doing this for views. I could care less how many people view my videos. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I could care less. I'm not. I'm not looking for that. I'm just putting out information. So let's talk about the contract thing, because I am. Really, I gotta, I gotta get rid of this. I gotta reinstall that, dude. Uh, this is Revel Uninstaller. Hey, if you guys wanna have programs that you can install that have, uh, you know, those ones that have the 30-day limits, you just use Revel and then reinstall the program. It completely wipes it from your system, so you can reinstall it. Revel Uninstaller. Am I advertising Revel? You better believe it. Look, two things. I just explained this to the staff. I've already explained this on video, ladies and gentlemen. Interest of the estate. Remember, you have an estate. Everybody has an estate. That sole proprietorship is an estate. A sole proprietor can use Chapter 11. You want to go under 541. That's where you recognize that all of your interests, all of you people who've lost property and they said it was in REM, you got to go back into court and say, uh, you need to explain how when it says in here all of the following property, all of it, not part of it, all of it, all of your interests. In the following property see equitable and legal as long as your name is on the title you have a legal interest as long as you live on the property you have an equitable interest it includes all of your legal and equitable interests in the property including court cases you have an interest in the court case if you don't have an interest in the case then why is your name on it so that's why you get to include your court cases it includes claims and filed cases against you or cases you filed don't believe me do your research people <sighs> all right got that out of the way now let's get on over to talking about the contract thing we got to go back here and we're gonna go to chat gpt i'm gonna let well this is perplexity is this no this is chat gpt he gave, they gave me some laws, but let me let me let you know we, what we asked. We ain't going to do everything because it's a lot. I had to, let me show you guys how to use ChatGPT. You already know what you're looking for. So you have to start off as if you're not looking for it. So the first thing I said, did you know that an application is a contract? Yes. Oh, let me let you, uh oh, I can't play it because it ain't playable now. It was playable before. Let's see if I can play this now. 
Hold on. Let's read text. Come on, I ain't got all day. Uh oh, it ain't gonna read it, y'all. It says we ain't reading nothing for you. Let's read aloud here. Yes. Nope. Oh, an application it's about time. Form oh, that's Maya. Particularly when it involves an offer, acceptance, and consideration. In legal terms, a contract is formed when there is an offer made by one party, acceptance of that offer by another party, and consideration exchanged between the parties. An application can sometimes meet these requirements, especially if it involves an offer of employment or participation in a program, and the applicant agrees to the terms outlined in the application. However, whether or not an application constitutes a contract depends on various factors, including... We ain't worried about those factors. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the first thing we need to know. The first thing I said, an application is a contract. Most people don't know that an application is a contract. Okay, so what if it involves an individual agreeing to comply with certain terms, such as that of exercising a right? So let's see what it had to say about that part right there. Because we we interested in the exercising of a of a mism, you know a right. Anyway, when an individual agrees to comply with certain terms, such as exercising a right, it can still potentially form a contract. Okay, on the, the, be, be be quiet right there. So an application referring to a job is a contract, a job application, because you're agreeing. Now she says she gives me that bull crap right there, but watch what I say now. I say this right here. Matter of fact, let's do both. Let's do me and GPT. So we're going to do both. Come on now. Get on. Keep on, keep on, keep on moving. Gonna keep on, keep on, keep on moving. Gonna keep on moving and dancing all through the night. Pretty bunch. If the application for a job requires one to submit to a drug screening, and their signature attesting to the information in their compliance with the terms of the application, this constitutes a contractual agreement. A contractual agreement is not just one that details value in consideration, it's also one whereby a party admits or agrees to something and then signs the document attesting to its accuracy chat GPT yes, if an application for a job includes terms requiring the applicant to submit to a drug screening and the applicant's signature attests to their compliance with those terms it can indeed constitute a contractual agreement. By signing the application, the applicant acknowledges and agrees to the terms outlined therein, including the requirement for a drug screening. In this scenario, the application serves as an offer from the employer, and the applicant's signature on the application serves as acceptance of that offer, forming a contractual agreement between the parties. The applicant's signature attesting to the accuracy of the information provided in their agreement to comply with the terms further solidifies the contractual nature of the agreement. As with any contract, the enforceability of such an agreement would depend on various factors, including the specific language used in the application, any Now we're going to get to some specificities. employment contracts. Because specificities is important. Involved. And intentions is important. Driver's license or any license by license this is me is talking. As a contract, whereby the licensee agrees to abide by certain statutes and slash or regulations and slash or policies and slash or procedures under penalty of perjury. Chat GPT yes, the application process for obtaining a driver's license or any other type of license typically involves the licensee agreeing to abide by certain statutes, regulations, policies, and procedures. In many jurisdictions, the act of applying for a license is considered a contractual agreement between the licensee and the licensing authority. When an individual applies for... Ladies and gentlemen, I asked it to give me some case law, so now I'm going to create a document for you guys. Paste. And we're going to take these case citations. And I checked these case citations. So we're going to copy. And we're going to... Yeah, I have no other, I, I can't do that. So give me a second. I have to do it this way. I have to copy it this way because if not, because I don't have a keyboard attached to this particular computer, it won't let me do it the way I want to do it. So I have to do it that way to attach this to it. Wake up. Wake up.
I need you to provide me with a motion to dismiss in the Superior Court of Los Angeles, California for a traffic citation whereby an officer has alleged and or presumed and the court has relied on such a presumption for unjust enrichment, profit, or gain based upon false and or misleading information leading to damage to my person and my property, whereby someone has claimed that I must engage in a contract subjecting myself to the obligations thereof in order to exercise a secured right, such as traveling upon the public highways of America, whereby I pay taxes for use and access to those public roads and highways, period. The very mere fact that I pay taxes to support and or build and or maintain these public throughways and or roads and or highways gives me the right to access that because I paid for the right of access, period. But nowhere does the law require me to contract with government for exercising the right and or to sign a contract with a government agency such as the Department of Motor Vehicles to exercise this right, period. Impeding the obligation of contract violates my rights under the Constitution, exclamation mark. Further, comma, the law prohibits involuntary servitude, comma, thereby explaining why government needs an individual to agree to the contract voluntarily, comma, which means it's not an obligation, period. So my rights secured by the First Amendment, comma, the Fourth Amendment, comma, the Fifth Amendment, comma, the Eighth Amendment, comma, the Tenth Amendment, as well as the Thirteenth Amendment have been violated. And I do not wish to be forced to contract, comma, I wish to have my right to be free of involuntary servitude, recognized in all jurisdictions, period. And since this right is secured by the Constitution, comma, and the court must abide by the Constitution, comma, it means that the court and its officers are operating in clear absence of all jurisdiction, and the matter must be dismissed with prejudice as a matter of right. And this shall serve as my petition for redress of grievances, exclamation mark. You are to include an introductory section, a table of authority section, table of contents section, a body, comma, and intro scratch that, comma, a body, comma, a summarization section, comma, you're to change the word submit to present and submit it to present it. You're also to change the word argument to presentment, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I just showed you how to create a motion. It really is that simple. Let's let's take a look. ChatGPT5. Superior Court of Los Angeles County, California. Your full name, your address, city, state, zip code, your phone number, your email address, plaintiff, defendant, versus officer's name or department. And all you do when she fin when it finishes, the only thing you do is you go back in and you add what you need to add to it. You you keep out all that other junk you've been hearing on these other stupid videos with these other with these individuals who are telling you what you should and should not be doing. I'm not telling you what you should and should not be doing. What I'm telling you is what the law says. So let's go over those case citations. Now we're gonna stop there. You're gonna get a copy of this. This is chapter GPT. 3.5 so you can go and continue this conversation this is up to you you get the motion and everything it's the link will be in the description you need to understand
get a copy. I told you guys, get a copy of the DMV application. Officer pulls you over, show him that. I'm not required to have a license. This is a contract. And then when you do that, attach just these five cases, ladies and gentlemen. Now look, I'm going to do you all a favor. I'm going to not only attach this, but we're going to go to Noai. Noai! Noai, get over here. You know I need to talk to you. This is Noai, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is Poe. Po, 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 po. Oh no, we can't go to Noai. <laughs> this is something, this is the bankruptcy one. We can't go to Noai. We have to go to perplexity. Where did I open up perplexity at? Is it here? This is perplexity. This is where I went to perplexity. Now, I want y'all to understand, these are the four cases that I put in there. The answer, the cases establish that the signing of a driver's license and driver's registration application under penalty of perjury constitute a contractual agreement between the applicant and the state to comply with applicable laws and regulations governing driver's license and motor vehicle. By, we're going to click on number one. We're going to click on it because that's what perplexity does. It gives us links and opinion and order. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea what this case is. Now, hold on. Not now. This breach of contract case arises from the settlement agreement following litigation regarding tenancy. Merriweather, the landlord, leased commercial property to the defendant. Merriweather subsequently brought an eviction action, and I guess this is where they're going to talk about contract. Okay? And that's, I don't know what this is talking about, but I know allegations are true, construed, and the light most favorable. well played allegation, factual allegations. You're just bringing up facts. That's why you bring up facts and conclusions of law. Where the proffered evidence fails to establish a genuine issue regarding the any material fact, the moving party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. The cause of this action, I don't know what this case has to do with. So let me pull this up. Give me one second. Uh, so, well, they talk about agreement, so that's the thing right there. They they do talk about agreement. Uh, the scope of the release clause of the settlement agreement, and give me one second. We got to go back to perplexity because I'm perplexed, perplexity. So let's rewrite this. Oh, I can't rewrite it. It, it. When you do that, it wants you to do all of that. So what's the significance of the cases relating to driver's license application, and how does these cases impact the relationship with driver and the state, and are there any other cases that have addressed the legal implication of driver's license application? Let's see that one right there. Now, you guys will get to do the exact same thing. Unlawful prison aliens uh, medical review. Yes, there are several cases that addresses the legal implications of signing a driver's license application. These cases right here, okay? Now, what are the different type of driver's license? Nope. What states determine eligibility? Nope. What are the consequences of being denied a driver's license? Don't care about any of those. Don't care about any of those. Wake up. Spacebar. What does this case have to do with driver's license applications being construed as contracts? Obligational hyphen. Stop listening. Michigan Court of Appeals does not appear to directly address the issue of driver's license applications being construed as contractual obligation. This case seems to be a business dispute. Then why did you list it? The other search provides does not appear. Okay, give me one second. Uh, obligational contracts differ from other types of contracts. What are some examples of obligational contracts in the context of driver's licenses? So an obligational contract, you are agreeing to be obliged or bound by there are several types of contracts that deal with these, and it lists those cases. These cases demonstrate the courts have consistently found that the act of signing a driver's license. Okay, so give me one second. I messed up. I apologize. We got to go all the way down here. And we go copy, 
and we go, GPT, where you at, homie? All right, we got GPT. Wake up. I need you to redo that petition. Comma, it wasn't detailed enough, and it doesn't seem like it is as professional as it should be. I need you to redo that motion. Comma, it wasn't detailed enough. Comma, and it doesn't seem like it was professional as would be suitable for court. Period. You are much better than this, comma, you need to do better. Colon. Spacebar. Stop listening. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is for you guys. This makes the petition a little bit more detailed. It also includes the information that we gave there, and it doesn't need to put the information because it's the same information and in all of that. So we have our table of authorities. Look at what they did right here. Comes now, blah, blah, blah. Table of contents, table of authorities, presentment of facts, presentation of argument. Not supposed to use argument, so you're going to have to, and you're not supposed to use submit it. It's presented. And wait a minute, wake up. Did I not tell you not to use the word argument or submit it? Question mark. Do it again. Stop listening. I apologize, y'all. Sometimes she can be so stupid. So we gon' we gonna let her be. And now you get to have the three different motions and y'all can choose. Okay? So we're gonna let y'all listen to my song hold on so that y'all can hear the song because we're gonna end the video with the song okay because it's a song come on now right here i don't need an application i cannot be forced to contract you are in complete absence of your jurisdiction this process is unconstitutional this process violates my secure rights you are impeding my I'm sorry, I think that's hilarious. You can shove it up your ass fault. Man, I, hey, 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 I didn't try to do that. <laughs> I did not. It just, it. I was trying to come up with a statement that I would say to a judge. And you guys can't do that, okay? I can do that type of stuff. I can be sarcastic with them. And it's not getting away with it. It's knowing when and how and in what language to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, you got a court case dealing with a ticket. Take that motion, put it on the record, do the caption correct for the case that you're putting it in, and then appeal on just that issue right there. No government agency, the government cannot impede the obligation to contract, which means they can't force you to contract. It's a violation of the contract clause, which is the government cannot impede the obligation to contract, and the 13th Amendment, which says involuntary servitude is unconstitutional. See, they can't force you to contract. So, well, if you want the privilege of driving, driving is not a privilege. Driving is a right. The right to travel on the highways is a right. It's not a privilege. Y'all need to pay attention. Share this with your friends. Hey, I got to go. I would love to keep talking, but we're, we're keeping these videos to a minimum. And so I got to go. Okay? Have a good day, y'all. 25 minutes. Well, 23 minutes, 55 seconds. Bye-bye. You don't need a driver's license, you don't need driver's license to travel You don't need a driver's license, you cannot be forced to contract The courts have held that a driver's license is a contract See the description under the video for proof You don't need a driver's license for traveling is a right You must drive safely because common law requires such 300 miles an hour It's not safe under any circumstances Why? Because if you try to stop so suddenly you are out of control You don't need a driver's license But you must be reasonable You don't need a driver's license But you must Absolutely must understand
Registration is also an application and offer to contract. 